So in this video, I'm gonna give you two reasons why inflation can be a great thing for some and a negative thing for others. This is Austin Rutherford, and thanks for being here. So first off, we need to start with mild inflation and steep inflation. So mild inflation is like one, two, maybe 3% of inflation per year. And then steep inflation is like four to 10 to 20 to 30% per year of inflation. But two entirely different things. And you gotta understand that as we're going through these next few steps. The benefit of mild inflation and why the government looks to have a one to 2% inflation rate per year is because when that happens, the society, the world, the people think that everything's good, right? Everything's gonna continue to go up slightly. So when people think that things are gonna continue to go up, they feel confident in their buying. So they spend more money, they buy more things, they reinvest, and there's money in motion. So the more money that's moving around, the better off everybody is. And when people spend more money, there needs to be more production. More production means companies need to make more things. They need to warehouse more things. They need to buy and build more warehouses. They need to hire more employees. They need to import more goods. They need to store more materials. They need to do all these things to keep up with the demand for what people want. So if they're selling toys and people are willing to buy toys, they need more. If people are selling houses, they're willing to buy houses, you need to build more. If you're selling cars and people are willing to buy cars, you need to build more, which is a good thing because again, money in motion, paying employees, buying materials, money moving around, it helps the employment rate go up because there's more money moving because people are confident in the market and they continue to buy and spend money. So that is one benefit of mild inflation is there's confidence in the market because things will continue to go slightly up. So there's confidence that if I buy something today, it will be worth a little bit more in the future and I'm okay knowing that. And at the same time, mild inflation gets rid of any potential deflation. So what is deflation? Deflation is basically when prices start to fall. So think about this from a consumer's perspective, like you and I. If I see that prices are falling, it might be great at the beginning. I might be like, oh yeah, like I'm buying. Like it's on, a, it's on sale, it's on a discount. I'm putting money in. But then if it keeps dropping, then you start questioning and asking yourself like, hmm, man, like is this market going to continue to go down? Like it was going up. Like, are, are, we in, are we in a crash right now? Are we in economic turmoil right now? And you start having those thoughts, which means that you stop spending as much money, you stop having as much confidence in the market, you stop reinvesting into things, and you kind of go into like hermit mode. You know, you just kind of hunker down, keep your money tight, hold on to it as tightly as possible. You know, grab, grab some of this here. People are like breaking it, trying to hold on to it versus when it's an inflationary, people are just throwing money everywhere, right? So. When it's deflationary, people are fearful, people are scared, they spend less money, which then reduces the amount of money moving around, which hurts the economy, which causes price reduction by businesses because they have to keep money coming in, which price reduction leads them to stop storing as much materials, which stop storing as much materials leads to them laying people off and stop ordering from other people in the world which you can see it's like a, it's, a, it's a domino effect of downhill, which is not a good thing. So people don't want deflationary environments because it's a negative thing. It's a very fearful thing to most people and governments don't want that because they don't want a downtrend. People want to see an uptrend, but if it's downtrending, people lose confidence, which again is domino effect and hurts the economy. And again, I want to reiterate the big things here. Inflation in those two circumstances can be a great thing if it's mild inflation, one, two, maybe 3% at max, because it's a confidence thing, right? Once it goes past that to steep inflation to four, five, 10, 20% inflation per year, that's when things can potentially turn negative. What we are seeing right now in the US is steep inflation, right? They're saying that inflation is maybe like five, six, 7% right now. We all know it's significantly higher than that. If you look at the prices of gas, of housing, of cars, of anything that people need on a daily basis, the inflation is through the roof, but they're only telling you it was like 2%. Now they're like, eh, five, 6%. No, in all reality, probably like 10, 20, maybe even 30% in certain categories. So we're way past the mild inflation point. We are in steep inflation at this point. And what happens when this happens? Literally, I don't think people understand this. Like inflation is people stealing, right? It's your money losing value. It's the government printing more money to inflate it to then lose your purchasing power to go out and buy more things so a dollar back in the day there used to be a dollar menu at wendy's there's not anymore it's like a dollar 29 menu 
because the purchasing power of a dollar has gone down. So let's just take a super quick example. Let's look at the housing prices just in Columbus, Ohio. So if you look at this chart right here, you can see that over 22 years, this chart starts in 2000, 2000 to uh, end of 2021, because that's the last data that was reported. So in 21 years, housing prices went from about $120,000 to $260,000. They doubled in 20 years. That's at least 5% a year. So you can see that the trend is a little bit lower and then it takes off. Over the last two years since COVID, since all this printing of money and inflation, the value of the house has gone up significantly. So the same $120,000 you used to have can no longer buy you a house. Can't even buy you half of a house. It's more than double what the price was only 21, 22 years ago. And if you look at where it dipped, like it hit the peak kind of in 2005, six, seven, and then hit the bottom in like 10, 11 or 12, right? So at the top, quote unquote, it was 140. At the bottom, it was 120. So I had this crazy, massive, you know, economic turmoil, huge crash, and it only went down 12 and a half percent. Now again, a lot of markets and a lot of other areas crashed a lot more than that, but it's only 12 and a half percent. Like again, nobody wants to see a crash like that, but, that's scary to a lot of people to lose 12 and a half percent of their wealth. I want to drill this point home. The amount of money that is being printed in the US economy right now leads to one thing, which is inflation, which is exactly what that chart showed of housing prices going through the roof over the last two years. You're losing purchasing power with your dollar and you can no longer afford the things that you used to be able to afford. And the only way to keep up with this is owning assets. At the end of the day, once it gets like out of control, like it is right now, there's really only two things the government can do to try and stop everything. There's only two options. Number one is they just let everything continue. Everything's cool. They try and keep hiding the rate of inflation. And what happens? Things keep going through the roof. Inflation skyrockets 10, 20, 30% a year in inflation. The value of the dollar, keep in mind the US dollar is like the world currency. So if this continues to happen, it will lose status of the world currency, which if it lose status of the world currency, the US is not in a good position. <laughs> you gotta understand this. But that's the first option that they have, is let everything continue, think everything's okay, keep lying to everybody like they've been doing, and then guess what? The US dollar loses reserve currency. So all over the world, people stop using it, which is gonna continue domino effect, continue to hurt, the US dollar. So that's option number one, which is kind of like the smooth, easy route. You know, nobody's quote unquote the bad guy if they go down that route. And number two is they increase interest rates, which they kind of already started and they insinuated that they're, that they're going to continue to increase interest rates over time. But what happens when you increase interest rates? The purchasing power goes down. The same money that I could buy, the house that I could afford at a, at a 2%, 3% interest rate was a million bucks. When it goes up to 5%, now I can only afford a $600,000 house. So my purchasing buyer as a consumer goes down because interest rates are higher, which this makes things less affordable, right? Now the increase in the interest rate means less money going out in circulation, which means that inflation would theoretically start to come back down. The problem with that is it can lead to a deflationary environment because if it becomes less affordable for people to borrow money to buy things, they stop spending as much money. They become more fearful. They have to save more money. They don't have more money in motion, which leads back to the same example we started this with, a deflationary environment. People are fearful. They stop spending money. Businesses have to lay people off, have to stop producing products, have to stop buying products, as many products. There's obviously still some out there because we need to live, but we're not overly spending, which then will hurt the economy as well and potentially lead to a market crash. We as a country are in a very, very tough spot because we have two options right here and both of them really don't have a good outcome at this point. And there's really two ways for you to win here. It's owning assets. It's buying assets that increase in value as inflation goes up, like crypto, like stocks, like real estate, which is amazing. And you may be sitting there thinking real estate, well, that sounds great, but I can't do it because I don't have any money. The beautiful thing about real estate is you don't need your money to do this business. I've been able to build a almost $15 million rental portfolio using other people's money. And I use this secret strategy to allow me to own assets using none of my own money. So shh, don't tell anybody, but if you check that out at the end of this video, check that link, check that video. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it as well. Or the second option, like Ray Dalio says, move your money out of the deflating currency 
like the US dollar at this point and move it into a currency that's growing, maybe like the Chinese yuan. So you may be asking yourself, what am I doing personally? I'm doing a couple of things. I'm putting a lot of money into real estate, assets that will continue to go up in value, putting a lot of money into stocks, assets that I think will continue to go up in value. And if the currency gets hurt, I think crypto is a good alternative to that personally, not financial advice, do your own due diligence. And I'm keeping some money in cash. The problem with cash is that I'm losing value every single day because of inflation. So you don't want to keep a ton of cash because it could mean you're losing money, but I am keeping a little bit of cash for peace of mind. So if things do go crazy, I do have some liquidity, some money to be able to still live on and not sweat everything going on around me. So let me know what your thoughts are on inflation, what you're doing with your money currently. Comment below, let me know. While you're down there, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. And hit that subscribe and notification bell so you can get all this content going forward. As always, appreciate you being here. We'll see you on the next one.